Okay, here we go, <laughs> next project. And I started off by taking a couple of pieces of, well, not really scrap, but semi-scrap I guess I had laying around. Uh, what I have here is a one quarter inch piece of maple, and that is uh, that is glued up, laminated to a one one quarter, a three eighths, three eighths inch of mahogany. You can see the maple is just slightly thinner than the mahogany. So uh, anyway, I went ahead and uh, put slathered some glue on there. Then I used this thing to clamp them up. I kind of just use, use my regular clamps. I wanted to see how this is going to work though. And uh, now the plan is to make a bowl shaped, I'm pretty sure you can see that, just like that. So um, this actually took some careful laying out. And what I did to start the layout was I, I found the center point on the, on the maple board, maple slightly smaller than the mahogany. So I found the center point, marked it. I actually tapped it very, very lightly with a nail just so when I put the compass into place, it would actually lock it, no, sorry, lock into place. It wouldn't slide on me. Then from there, I extended some lines at, and I made sure they're at right angles to, to each other. Extended some lines from the center to the outside, uh, to the outside edge of the maple. And I've got these two so from this, uh, and I've got these two lines scribed on the outside. Now the first one here is, and let me measure these for you real fast. The first one is, or sorry, from the center point to the inner circle, we're looking at one, two, and three quarters of an inch, or sorry, uh, seven eighths of an inch, and then three and one eighth inches to the uh, to the outside mark. Then. Again, like I said, this is a little complicated. You can see these lot, this line right here. Ah, sorry, this lot, this line right here. That's going back and forth, uh, going from here. Basically, it's going from here to here. I marked that one off, then found the center point on that line. So I think it was approximately two inches from each of my vertexes. Yeah, it, it was something like that. It was about two inches from the vertexes. Then I backed the uh, compass off and I found a, again, another point to mark off and I just traced a radius and I, and this was, this was, uh, this was by hand. So, uh, the radius I traced from the first, again, let me pull this out. <laughs> uh, the radius I traced out was Let's see, one inch, two inch, and a quarter, roughly. Yeah. So, roughly, again, from that mark to the center mark, about a two and a quarter inch radius here. And then I just used the compass to scribe the arc going between it, and then I extended the compass to the uh, outer mark, left, left it in the same spot here, and repeated that, and did it on all four sides. So you can kind of see uh, what the general shape of the bowl is going to be. So, anyway, with that, after I, uh, I did that, I went in and tapped a starter hole for my drill. And then, uh, um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, it's uh, rainy outside and lightning-y and all that, uh, all that stuff that you don't want to be dealing with when you're working with metal or power tools or electricity or anything like that. So, looks like I'm going to be, uh, looks like I'm going to be sitting inside for a little bit. So, anyway, when it gets cleared up, we'll go outside and uh, start doing some cutting. So, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, um, well, I was hoping to go out and get some scroll sawing done tonight on this one. But yeah. <laughs> Whoa, okay, yeah, that was a good one. Uh, but as it was, I didn't think I had the time, so what I ended up, ended up doing was going out and doing some really, really fast cuts on some, uh, well, some some quarter inch scrap that I had. Well, I don't know if I call it scrap because they're certainly big enough to be useful. But anyway, uh, what I did was I got 
two pieces of quarter inch maple and in between them I'm going to sandwich a piece of quarter inch cherry and then for my other other uh, side I've got two pieces of quarter inch cherry um, in between of which I'm going to sandwich a piece of quarter inch mahogany sorry the dog decided to start crunching really really loud so anyway uh, these uh, so anyway what I'm gonna end up with is a is a blank uh, in three quarters of an inch thick with contrasting woods although it's a little hard to see it right now and then uh, uh, then, uh, yeah, sorry, got super tongue tied there. <laughs> so anyway, um, like I was trying to say, uh, two pieces of cherry sandwiched around a, a piece of uh, mahogany, again, all a quarter inch thick. So I'm going to get two pieces or, or two blanks that are three quarters of an inch thick. And they're uh, an, an inch and five eighths wide, although it really doesn't matter. The exact width doesn't matter as long as you can end up cutting a few quarter inch strips out of them. So I would say at least, um, I would say at least an inch and a half wide. So uh, anyway, uh, with that, I've got to get these glued up and uh, I'll come back and I'll show you the next step on this particular bowl. So talk to you in a bit. All right, um, anyway, <laughs> here's the next step. And again, left, like I said, I laminated together uh, maple, cherry, maple, quarter inch thick, and cherry, mahogany, cherry, quarter inch thick. So I've got two strips of the cherry mahogany uh, laminates and four strips of the maple cherry laminate. And they are, well, at least the uh, business <laughs> section of them is about eight inches long, maybe a hair over. Uh, again, the exact distance doesn't matter as long as I've got enough for the final project. This is going to be more than enough. So anyway, uh, what I have to do at this point is take two of the maple cherry laminates. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to laminate those with one of the cherry mahogany laminate. So we're going to get something that looks like that on the end. So uh, anyway, I've got to, I just got to glue these two up and make sure I put them in the right order. Uh, anyway, I got to glue these two up. And uh, once I've done that and the glue has set thoroughly, I'll come back and show you the next step. So all right, we're back for the next step. And I've, uh, I've unclamped the two glue up pieces I did. And you can see kind of what the cross section on them looks like. Again, we have uh, maple, cherry, maple, cherry, mahogany, cherry, maple, cherry, maple. So uh, what I'm going to do is I have a couple of pieces of sapel or sapili or however the hell it's pronounced sitting here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually sandwich this piece between the two pieces of sapili. So uh, you can see what we're looking like right here. Now the sapili I have here, I've got two pieces, like I said, I got two pieces. They are four inches wide and seven inches long. And after I, after I glue this up, I'm going to have a pretty good size blank. It's going to be uh, seven by well, almost nine inches. So, but the thing is, I am going to have a bit, ooh, sorry about that. I am going to have a little bit, a uh, bit more waste than I anticipated, but that's okay. So anyway, uh, what I'm doing is I'm not, I didn't bother sanding the uh, rough sides off because what I'm going to do is when I glue these into place, these are going to go in with the two smooth sides on the inside. So I've got, so I have the maple cherry maple, uh, laminate laminates on the top and the bottom. So anyway, let me knock that out and I'll come back and I'll show you the next step. All right. Hey, uh, oh, dark theory. I woke up wide awake. So I decided to come out and mess with this for just a couple of minutes. Anyway, uh, what I did was, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, basically I just measured the length of this blank right here. Uh, went halfway, uh, 
it's about it's a hair over seven and a quarter inches so anyway like i said measured halfway on the blank and i drew a heavy line right across it and again i don't know if you can see it or not but uh, the plan is to cut this bisect this in this direction after i do that i'll come back and show you what i'm going to do next all right i went out and took <laughs> Uh, it took longer to set up the cut than it actually did to make the cut, but what I did was the uh, blank that I had, I went ahead and cut that in half uh, across the grain. And let me show you what the cross section of it looks like, so I think you're going to have an idea of what the, what the end product is going to kind of end up looking like. I am going to have to do some very aggressive sanding to level that off, but you know, that's what, it, that's what things are. So anyway. Uh, I've got that, and now I've got the other blank uh, that I glued up earlier with the uh, triple triple lamination there. And the idea now is to just put this in place, glue it up, and then again let the clamps do its work, do their work. Uh, <clears throat> I went ahead and made a couple of reference marks on this piece just so I've got it dead center, so uh, I can line it up as best I can with the center strip on this. It doesn't, ha again, it doesn't have to be exact, but uh, I am trying to maximize the amount of material uh, that I'm gonna be able to use. So, yeah. So anyway, uh, I guess that's it for now. So let me do a glue up and I'll come back and I'll show you what that's looking like. So, oh, glue up and some sanding. Be right back. All right, uh, back to this one. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I've got the uh, table saw set. <laughs> table saw, geez. I've got the scroll saw set to a 20 degree angle, and now I'm just going to go ahead and cut my outside line. So all right, uh, time to go drill the uh, starter hole for the inside of the first ring. So be right back. All right. Uh, the job now is to trace the inside of the first ring that I cut out back onto the blank. So I've got everything lined up. So hopefully I can do this without creating too much of a mess. So just making sure I've got a nice heavy line here. And I am going to mark my drill point on the opposite side from where I put the first drill point in. So just go ahead and tap this in real quick. Now, uh, but however, unlike the first ring, the second one is going to get drilled. Good. The second one is going to get drilled at 25 degrees, at a 25 degree angle. And uh, the reason for that is, as I cut each one of these layers out, the, this ring is going to be the top ring on the on the final on the final bowl. And I cut it at 20 degrees, and as you can see, it's pretty. It's a pretty steep cut. The second one is going to be at 25 degrees, so it's going to be a little, a little steeper than this. The third ring is going to be at 35? Yeah, 35 degrees, so it's going to be even steeper. So what's going to happen is the bowl is actually going to cup kind of like that as it goes down. You'll get to see the final product, but anyway, let me go ahead and, uh, and drill, and it's going to be back out on the saw. So, be right back. All right, so that's what I get for working as uh, tired as I am, you, I ended up uh, missing a detail that was pretty important, actually. And what I did was, what I did was I uh, uh, drilled my entry hole at 25 degrees, but I forgot to tilt the table. To 25 degrees and yeah that might end up being a problem so what I'm doing is I'm I went ahead and I drilled 
the hole for the third ring at 25 degrees. And uh, I'm just going to cut another, I'm just going to cut an extra, uh, extra ring on the bowl. So if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, then uh, lesson learned, right? Hole drilled at 35 degrees, blade threaded, table double checked at 35 degrees. So uh, at this point, let's go ahead and get this thing cinched down. And tighten up and cut out this last ring. All right, time for the glue up, and definitely, uh, I am definitely going to need to use this bad boy right here. So uh, first thing I got to do is make sure I've got my various rings aligned. So I'm going to go ahead. Nope, that is not how that one lines up. Take care of that. And then uh, as I get these finished, or as I get these set up, I should have a pretty good idea of how my sanding is going to go. I do have a couple of spots again that, like, like the last time I've done this, I am a little concerned about. And uh, just want to make sure that, you know, things are lined up the way they're supposed to be. I'm going to have to do a lot, a lot of hand sanding, hand sanding, to make sure everything is lined up. <laughs> Is aligned. Okay, so there we go. I've got the I got the four little four rings lined up, and everything's looking okay from this end. So at this point, it's uh, yeah, it's time to glue up. But like I said, what I want to do is I just want to give this one last eyeball. I want to make sure there's not any spots where I have to take you know. A lot I'm gonna to have to take a lot off the inside like for example right here that are gonna to correspond to a spot where I'm gonna to have to take a, a lot off the outside like right there <laughs> uh, so I don't end up with a wall that's too thin so and again uh, I want to make sure I've got the end grain and the side grain lined up and it's looking pretty good I think I'm good to go so at this point, it's time to just very, very patiently, well first I'm going to cut a piece of parchment paper out to sit on the bottom of my, jig, of my uh, gluing jig here, just so I don't accidentally glue anything to the <laughs> gluing jig. But uh, yeah, now it's time to, uh, uh, now it's time to glue these rings up. So, I'm just going to go keep them stacked and here we go all right I just spent <laughs> a hell of a long time sanding and then sanding and sanding and sanding okay so anyway uh, what I did was I took some 80 grit sandpaper which I got laying around here somewhere and I made sure I went into this bowl and into this bowl and made sure all the seams were flush. Uh, that was the main, that was the main thing. So I've got, everything looks nice and smooth in there. So uh, after I did that, I went back and I sanded with some 150 grit. And then I just gave it a light shot with some 220. And the idea there was to just not have it a nice, nice fairly smooth finish again I am going to go back and, and finish this up with some either some Danish oil or some mineral mineral oil and give it a, a very fine grit sanding but anyway and while I was at it 
I went out and I took the very first bowl I made, the one out of Poplar, and I went in with that 80 grit paper and I cleaned up the uh, flaws that I had. Oops, on the inside there. Uh, yeah, and those just need to get thrown out. So anyway, uh, yeah, the next part's going to be sand is going to be uh, is going to be gluing up. So you're putting the well, basically putting the bases on the new bowls, and uh, after that's done, I'm going to have to sand the outside. So the you know what, we'll come back to that. So talk to you in a bit. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to have to sand this bowl. Well, the outside of it by hand, and that's because, again, of those lobes. And, yeah, I mean, I could do the rough shaping on the power sander, but you know what? Since I've got to do that much anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and work it by hand. So. All right, morning. <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to make one of these again <laughs> for a very long time. Uh, even, even after doing all the, the power sanding I could, I ended up having to spend hours, hours? Well, a very long time. It felt like hours, uh, uh sanding this down by hand, especially getting into the, uh, grooves up here. Just no way I could, uh, just no way I could, I could do it on a belt sander. I probably, I'm going to have to actually see about getting an actual flap wheel or something like that so some kind of definitely some kind of mechanical automated i, I don't know uh solution on that so anyway that's this is done so i'm ready to start the next phase on that on oh yeah on that on this which is finishing <clears throat> but before i do that i want to i want to get everything going at the same time i got these two bowls so this is again this is the first one i made this one's out of poplar and what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this over the over the belt sander just to take off some of the some of the rougher spots on here or less aesthetically pleasing spots on here and then i'm going to go ahead and run this bowl across it as well and the nice thing about this is it gives me uh, again because i've got a flat surface i'm, I'm working with here I can certainly, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it, it basically lets the, you, you, I think you've seen what I've done before, lets the bowl spin uh, as the belt's pulling it, the bowl will spin. I just control it with my hand uh, and uh, I end up getting a very smooth finish that just has to be touched up with a little bit of hand sanding, not epic amounts of hand sanding. So with that, I think it's time to get going. I want to get these knocked out today if I can. Should be able to, and uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, here we go. This is uh, this is the final product, and what I did was, like I said, went out and I hand rubbed Danish oil into all three of these bowls. Now, <clears throat> this was the original bowl, the very first one of these that I made, and I just didn't like the spray-on shellac finish, and there were some rough spots on there I wanted to clean up. So I went ahead and did that. And then the Danish oil did a good job. It's really, it's, it's kind of hard to tell. It's kind of subdued on this one because the poplar, the poplar takes Danish oil okay, but it just doesn't come out as rich looking as some other woods. So maybe the shellac would have been a better choice, but you know what? No real complaints. It looks, I think it looks pretty good. So let's, uh, let's slide that one out of the way and I'll pull this one up <laughs> or actually I'll, I'll get a close-up of this one uh, this is this is the maple and mahogany sandwich lobed bowl Let me show you the shape of it from above and there you go and this one like I said was a real pain in the ass to do just because of all the sanding I had to do in these grooves uh, right here but my patience was well, I don't know if patience, my perseverance, there we go, that's the word I was looking for. My perseverance was rewarded because you can see it's looking pretty good. And I, overall, I liked, I liked the way it looks, I liked the way it came out, and it's pretty, um, well, pretty. And visually, I think it's nice and striking. So, but 
This is the one I really like. This is the uh, well those uh, those little those little cross pieces that I made. You can you can see how they look, and I think it came out to be a really really good contrast. Although again, the mahogany centerpiece here doesn't really stand out very much from the sapili. Uh, on the other hand, the cherry does stand out, stand out nicely, and of course the maple is going to, so uh, I think this piece came out really, really well. And again, all three of these were finished up with Danish oil, so, uh, oh, and you know what, let's, uh, let's throw this one in there as a comparison. That's the mineral oil and beeswax bowl that I finished up, and well, not hard to see a difference between the Danish oil and the mineral oil, but again, the Danish oil, once it cures, it's going to give a longer lasting finish, a longer lasting and tougher finish than the mineral oil will. The mineral oil really won't cure. Uh, I can keep going back and applying mineral oil just by rubbing it on with a, with a, with a paper towel if I need to, uh, but it's, it's, one of the, it's a high maintenance finish is what it is. So anyway, that's what I spent my morning doing was finishing up the sanding on these and then uh, slapping some Danish oil on them. So at this point, it, it's time to edit all this together and throw it up and see what, see what you all think about it. So I already have my next project, but, but I don't know if I'm going to start on it today. We'll see how bored I get. So with that, uh, thanks for watching and I will talk to you later. Bye.